Steven, I'm trying to talk quiet because I'm in my Apple Vision Pros on on the airplane and I'm in row 17. And I don't want people to know what I'm doing. But what's that? No, I'm in my Apple Vision Pro. I'm on a phone. Call. No, I'm not. I'm not looking at porn. No, there's no nudity happening in here. No, you can't look. No, you can't. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. No, I, no I'm, I'm watching. I'm watching puppies. It's sad puppies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, Stephen. So I was that guy. I wore the Apple Vision Pro for the first time on an airplane in row 17. So what did the people next to you think? Did they talk to you about it? No, well, the one guy that talked to me was a periodontist retired. He thought it was pretty cool. That was on the way out. Now, look, I'm not the I, I didn't sit there and put it on as soon as I sat on the airplane. I didn't walk on the airplane. I didn't wear it in the airport and then walk up <laughs> see, to the counter. And be I like, could see you doing that, though. I really could. You have no shame. <laughs> and I think it's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, but it's not even like I don't. Yes, I don't care what people think, but really also don't. there was. It makes no sense for me to wear it and bring unwanted. Look, I already have an afro. I already wear an, a skin tight. You shirt. love the whole look at me thing. That's why I'm surprised you don't. Uh, you don't want to wear it. <laughs> I don't have the love whole look at like at me look, look at, at thing. me it's what, in my giant afro and giant arms and tight shirt. <laughs> yeah, the, no, that's for me. I do this stuff for me. I don't do it for the other people. See, that's the misconception that there is out there is that people look at, at it as if, if I'm doing You're it to bring it for attention. attention. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like some people that would say that you stir the pot, right? Just to push the buttons of people. And that's not play the devil's case. advocate. Yeah, no, it's not the case. I just say it and I do it and I do it for me. And, you know, because it's. It's all about me. So I want to know, like, were, you always like to have everything real big in your Apple Vision Pro. So were you yeah. literally looking around, like, left to right? So it almost looks like if I was sitting next to you that you're staring at me with it's your possible. Apple Vision Pro. But really, you're looking at, like, a movie or a picture. And it's just got to be super awkward for that person sitting next to you. <laughs> well, when I edited inside of uh, my Lightroom. So basically, I opened the laptop and made the screen covered the entire row so i probably was looking to the left and probably was looking to the right awesome. a little awkwardly <laughs> so but i awkward. blocked it out like i turned them off so i couldn't see them and then other times i just turned on the pass through so i could see what other people were doing oh i'm not saying it's awkward for you i'm saying it's super awkward for them yeah well they were losers on ipads <laughs> i mean who uses an ipad now? <laughs> look at your legacy tech <laughs> You know, so wait, uh, let's get back to the Apple thing. I want to give a quick preview of episode number 93. Wow. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube or listening on YouTube, welcome. That's a new thing. We started last week. It has some good amount of views and there are comments. So if you do want to leave a comment on one of our videos, you can either text us at the text line, which is uh, 313-710-9729. Uh, that's better. And or leave a comment on the YouTubes. And we've been debating for quite some time ever since YouTube introduced the podcast tab uh, if we should put it on YouTube, but we would have had to every episode export it separately as a video file, upload it separately, blah, blah, blah. Now that they support RSS feeds and we can simply upload it to our podcast host and it gets fed to YouTube immediately, it's just great. It goes up automatically. We don't have to think about it. And that's why we kind of pulled the trigger and finally put it on YouTube. Yeah. So that's a, it's, it's a great place to be if you guys want to leave. We'll go back and look at comments every once in a while, but um, but it's there and you can listen to it wherever you want. So we have a lot to discuss. I'm going to get back into the Apple Vision Pro thing and talk about being in the Mile High Club with myself. Yes. We've got a server got delivered. Uh, we're going to talk about the Philadelphia Phillies photographers talking to me about should they get uh, more A1s or go to the A93. Hmm. We've got the whole Kate Middleton debacle, which we've got some things to talk about. A wedding videographer telling the guests uh, to stay off their phones or else. Um, I shot with a four by five yesterday That's because awesome. I'm better than people that shoot 35 millimeter. <laughs> and you and your puny 35. I got large format, buddy. <laughs> I might go pick up an eight by 10 tomorrow. So that's to the best eight by 10, Steven, eight by 10 view camera. That's awesome. There is one someone's giving me. So I have very, I have very that cool that I'm going to pick up. And then we actually have a pretty big news section this week. Talk about TikTok ban. Nikon releases firmware. Uh, Nikon buys red. I doubt we'll talk about the Leica SL3, but it's in there as well. Jam We've got show. all of that to talk about. It is jam-packed. 
Oh, my guy just texted me with my uh, 8x10. Did he send... What did he say? Oh, no, he just sent me directions on where to pick it up. This was my old professor from college, uh, Drew. Drew Simcox, really good guy. He said that he still has 8x10s available. Every time we go to Photo Plus, he was always always on the train with us. Always on the train with us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We always somehow ended up on the same train from Philly to New York. Yeah, he's good people. Well, anyway, let's get back into the Apple Vision Pro part real fast. Truth be told, I haven't used it a ton at home. I don't use it at home, and I think that's perfectly fine for me on the road what a unbelievable game changer of a thing for me for travel well the fact that now you can be in a hotel room and you know where you're used to your 32 inch uh, xdr monitor at home you can now have a 60 inch or a 100 inch screen in front of you my question is did you actually edit photos in lightroom and did you look at them on your monitor when you got home and how were the edits after the fact yeah I'll get to that. I'll, I'll hold hold that okay. type of thought because the first thing you talked about is building the the hundred or making a hundred inch screen. I don't. I I still think that they need to do a firmware update that allows me to wrap the screen to just control the bow bend. I it does. It's flat right now. I would like to be able to bow it so that I can see it wrap around me more. I think that would be a feature that hopefully they add. So you can look that at the would person to the left and to the right <laughs> awkwardly well, on the of, plane. Stephen, here here's what happened. <laughs> When, when that breaking news happened that Nikon bought Red and I was in uh, Phoenix at the time, I was like, oh shit, I need to go make a video. Make a video on my phone, come back into the, into the Airbnb, the house we were staying at, yep. opened up the laptop, put on my Apple Vision Pro and started working on a big display in front of me. The PA that we hired was due there at like 8.30 in the morning, comes into the door and it was like, hello. And so I lean around the digital screen in my viewfinder to say hi to the guy. <laughs> I must have looked like an absolute moron. Now, that He's like, there's been nothing funny. in front of you. <laughs> no, that would have been funny to have video of because I'm like, I can't see anything through the screen. I'm going to look around the screen. So I look around the screen <laughs> at the funny. guy and I was like. This must be awkward for you, but I will say the productivity aspect for me, not having to use a 16 inch display and to easily be able to uh, do that work that I needed to do to post that video was just so much easier having a larger screen and being able to be inside of that. And I think it really benefits someone like you, too, who has a general hard time of seeing. I think you having everything up and close, sharp, you know, right in front of you, that's a lot easier for you than having to wear your glasses at home or something like that. Oh, it was just so much better. Yeah. It was just great. And on the airplane, it was amazing watching movies just to be able to consume the content. I have my AirPod Pros. Like I sat down and I'm like, I've got an Apple Vision Pro, an Apple Watch Ultra. I've got my AirPod Pros. And I've got a MacBook Pro all in my bag right now. The only thing I don't have is my iPad Pro is left at home because I have the Apple Vision Pro, so I didn't need to bring it. That's a lot of Apple. So was, I mean, you are an Apple fanboy. Let's just, let's just say it. I'm not a fanboy. It's just the stuff works. <laughs> so were you a part of that Mile High Club or what you were watching was the Mile High Club? Oh, no. I mean, I was all by myself, Stephen. I oh, thought about so your list. I was, no, I mean, I was like... <laughs> You could absolutely 100% watch porn here without a problem and no one would know at this point. Or that awkward moment where you've got the granny sitting next to you and you're watching a movie and the girl gets on top of the guy and oh, her boobs are bouncing so up and down. It's so uncomfortable. Like you try to turn your display and then you know what? I've got that, you know, that six-year-old kid sitting behind me. I'm just like, fuck it. I'm just going to leave this on. I don't care. It's... This is me. I'm watching this movie. On the plane ride home from Disney, uh, there was a guy with a giant iPad to the right front of me. And I was watching the movie with him because I had Hannah in my lap and I couldn't watch anything else. And I'm just like awkwardly watching his screen. And yeah, it, it is super awkward when that happens, like a sex scene in a movie. And you're like, uh, should I dim the screen? Should I turn it off? Should I fast forward? Because uh, basically everyone in the plane, you know, in your vicinity can see what you're watching. But with the Apple yeah. Vision Pro, you can watch anything you want. Anything. So, so the produ productivity aspect was great. The entertainment aspect was great. I could read news. I could read the magazine, like newsstand, in there if I wanted. I uh, I was able to edit my photos, and that was amazing. Being able to just see my photos in front of me and edit them, and when I got them back into the computer, the it was pretty close. I just think sometimes the brightness is off. Too much uh, shadows raised, 
and it made it look too HDR for yeah, some. Yeah. And then others were just great. And I did start with our presets as a as a point, starting point. A starting point for some of them. So it's not that far. They weren't that far off. Just a little bit of tweaking that I needed to do. So how was the color, like the white balance? Was that pretty spot on or do you find them to be too warm, too cold after the fact? I think it was pretty close. I think some of the saturation was maybe too vibrant and saturated. And some of those colors just looked a little off fake so i yeah. need to just tweak like the 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 green and the magenta a little bit more the tint than the actual white balance a little bit gotcha. yeah most of it was though was was absolutely usable and good i just need to pull back on raising shadows too far um in in there so i think it i think it worked out really well and man oh and in terms of battery life i was able to plug right into the airplane so i stayed at 100 percent and didn't have to worry about battery life oh sweet now were you editing on the plane like using your hand gestures or were you using a, a keyboard oh. or a mouse or, or any of that no, i was using the display so i was using my laptop where you connect to it and you use the laptop display so no i was using the mouse and the keyboard okay i didn't know if it was even more awkward with you actually having your hands in the air and like getting your elbows in their face and trying to edit on the plane yeah i might have touched my neighbor once by accident <laughs> trying to trying to grow the size of the screen yeah you smack him in the face with your elbow <laughs> ah, shit sorry dude <laughs> Like, uh, you, you It'd be funny if you like hit him on the shoulder. IPad. You're like, "This is a good movie, right?" He's like, "What are you talking yeah. about, weirdo?" Oh, and the other thing is, there's a meditation app in there. You have the choice between a woman, a man talking, or no one talking. And I chose the no one talking. And it's kind of like this breathing thing. You go inside of this sphere, and it's just like it makes a really good whatever music they used that they created for this it's just the same thing over and over but it's just breathing it's like a beat that's in and out in and out and it put me to sleep which was great i think they say if you have a hard time sleeping to focus on your breaths and then that will eventually get you to sleep i sleep really well anyway so do. i don't worry about it. but on an airplane it's different um but it really did i just i put on this meditation app thing and it, it says like 20 minutes so i did 20 minutes but then i just hit extend and i woke up and i was in there for 50 minutes wow that's how long it was so it was another 30 minutes out so that was good but anyway that's my apple vision do i think it's still for everybody the answer is uh no if they made it thinner and lighter and the same and power, less I'd, be, expensive. I'd be much uh, less expensive. <laughs> yes. But for me, the entertainment aspect for travel and the productivity aspect for travel is great. But at home, I don't see myself using it very often. So uh, server, we got a server delivered finally uh, from Synology, special delivery from Synology. We got a big box. What's it got? 12 bays on it. I don't 12? know. You looked at it. I looked at it or for like it 20? two seconds. It's 20 bays, isn't it? I think it's 20. It was 288 terabytes total, I believe. Oh, yeah. With no RAID backup. Yeah, 288 divided by... Nope. I think it's 16. Yeah, it's 16. 16 times 18. Yeah. So, I guess it's a 16-bay Synology uh, rack station, and they sent uh, 16 18-terabyte enterprise drives and so the reason we needed a new box is well dropbox kind of screwed everybody by getting rid of their as much storage as you need option they are sunsetting it after well we had a lot of terabytes stored on it not so much that it's it's also more the fact that our actual physical server is completely filled and has been filled for quite some time yeah but this time we're going to have a, an it specialist come in and help us set up how we think we need to set it up and use the older server boxes as extra storage on the on the because you can daisy chain the older bot they're not when i say older they're just they're different than the rack station the rack station we can't uh daisy chain with these other ones but we can daisy chain the other two that have like 192 terabytes each and that can be another server for us so that we could have one thing here one thing there be able to access it remotely um, and just have that storage. Yeah, I've got a good, I don't know, 40, 50 terabytes to dump uh, from my Lacey 12 big. That's a 64 terabyte. But that thing's even almost filled. So I'm going to have to dump a ton of data on there. We're going to have to figure out the Dropbox situation. I mean, to put it into perspective, we've got about 300 terabytes on Dropbox that we have to pull down. But more realistically, probably more like 200 terabytes that we're actually going to keep. Well, I don't think we need to pull it all down. I think we've got... Well, you're trying to take everything off Dropbox, correct? No, I mean, I, I, I mean, we will still get a certain amount of storage on Dropbox, which is not that much. It's, it's like, like five terabytes, five each. terabytes. I could fill that user. in a week with the videos we it's film. Just, it's bullshit. 
like fuck you Dropbox for doing what you did yep. to put it bluntly well like, I think everyone should have been grandfathered in if you signed up for the original unlimited plan the fact that they changed all of that and completely switched you know plans is is not okay and I can't I can't find any way in in through anybody to get any uh, grace period yeah like everybody's just like they're all like no just say no to everything and i and i have some friends that are like oh i got a four-year extension because they only have like 40 terabytes right they don't have what we have i don't there. know how they they expect us to pull down that much data you know it's just insane like where are we gonna put 300 terabytes I'm, I'm still going to try to find a way around it um, f- to, to talk to them. There's other options that are out there, but w- with Dropbox raising the price, we're basically wanting to charge for all that. It would be roughly like $2,500 a month. That's not happening. Yeah. So we're going to find out the new solution. We'll get the server set up. Uh, we will be making a video walkthrough on, on, on the Synology box that we have. And though that's a big box for us, they do have other options for other people that are much smaller, like five bay Synology boxes that might be good options for you guys who need redundant storage. And yes, it's going to be a sponsored video because we've worked with them in the past on other projects and we are working with them again uh, for our solution here. Because anything's better than a Drobo, which went out of business. Another solution that people used to use. I hated Drobo. I really did. It just did not work well with my PC. No, Drobo was always a scary thing. And they're like, this is great because you have all this backup. But if the Drobo failed... It was a proprietary format exactly. and you were screwed yep. and they went out of business. But let's move on. A1 discussion, A93 discussion. This is a big topic in the sports world, an action world right now. Is there uh, All the sports shooters had A1s that, that shot Sony. They loved the A1. They felt that that was an amazing camera. It gave them their 50 megapixels. They loved the autofocus. They loved the speed. And then the A93 comes out. And I start getting calls from different uh, team photographers that I know, like the Phillies team photographer was trying to figure out. He's like, look, I've got budget. Um, I don't think an A1 is coming. An A1 replacement's coming anytime soon. Do I buy two more A1s or do I purchase one A93 and see what happens? And you know what he ended up doing, Stephen? Buying an A93. Two of them. He ended up buying two A93s and... Another Phillies photographer ended up texting me and telling me he hates me because now he's being told by the Phillies main photographer he that needs he needs to get, to get an, an A93, A93 <laughs> and replace his A1 and uh, don't spend money on the A1. Stop making and me spend money, Jared. <laughs> the reasons that they gave are the reasons that we always give about these this stuff is they they love the autofocus is better. Yeah. The ergonomics are better. The they said the color is better. I don't know how to to I mean, the color of my elephant photos from Africa. I was I mean, yes, I got some really nice color, but it's hard to quantify that against some other yeah. camera system. No matter what sensor, I can always make the color match like another you know brand or something. And they love the shooting speed. So that he's sense. like, I don't know that I need the 120. What about the know, pre-capture option? pre-capture which we didn't really talk about much but i'm hoping that they do get into that but he also brought up an interesting point he's like i don't think i ever got 30 frames a second on his a1 uh, and i'm not sure how that happened that doesn't make Um, sense i'm pretty sure that we tested out getting it oh we definitely did every time a new sony would come out we would always test that frame rate and confirm that it was you know the truly 30 frames per second or whatever yeah but he um he thanked me for for helping him guide him in the direction of buying two of two A nine threes instead of two A ones. It just made more sense. And I mean, what do I always tell people that have never used an R three or an A one or the Nikon people that have only used Nikon like Z six and Z seven? You don't know what you don't know. You know, if you've only used one camera, you have nothing to compare it to. Yeah, it's going to be the best autofocus ever ever that you use personally but when you start comparing cameras that's when you truly realize sony i would say at this point with the a93 is probably the top tier in terms of autofocus i consider so i've said for a long time that the r3 was the top of the top autofocus i think they were until the r the a7 r5 came out with the ai processor chip i still think the r3 is better and I and and I will tell you that it's it's more sticky and I believe more accurate still with the dual pixel AF than the than the A seven R five and the A nine. I think the A nine is a really 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 close to the R three. I think they're on par 
at this point, but I've said all along that when, when I had the A1 and that R3 that I took out to the, sorry, yeah, R3 and the A1 that I took out to the, the, the football game and I shot a half with both of them, I was like, holy shit. The A1 can't find a face. It's just lock on tracking when I acquire the subject, whereas the R3 acquires the subject for me. Now the A93 does that too. Well, yeah, now the A93 has that AI processor chip that now actually sees human objects versus just, hey, tell us where to lock on and we'll track that object. Now it's like, that's a face, that's a human body, whatever, that's a torso. We're going to track that automatically. And we've realized, too, with the R3 versus A93 comparison that we did in terms of the sensor quality, you know, the fact that the A93 is a a stop and a third worse in general with the base ISO of 250 versus 100. It's not that bad until you start reaching the real high ISOs like 12,800 and above. You really can't tell that much of a difference. And I think that's the same with the A1 as well. Yeah. And I think the the biggest thing with the A93 is the price point. Mm -hmm. It's expensive. But it's expensive in comparison to what the A1 gave you. Um, And I had to I had to go through that same process. Right. I went from an A7 4, A7 R4, which was a 60 megapixel sensor and go all the way down to a 24 megapixel sensor of the R3. Big drop. And and it's not a problem for me. Right. Like, that's not a problem. You don't crop anyway. So that never was an issue for you. Now, I could see someone in the sports world really having a dilemma between switching with a very high resolution sensor to a 24 megapixel where I'm sure they're cropping most of the time. And I'm saying cropping like a good amount, you know, 50 percent. Nah, not all of them. I'm we're thinking not, we're of our friend Bruce King Bruce Cropper. Bennett. Yeah, no. <laughs> Bruce I mean, Bennett. King Cropper cropping 85 percent of the frame to the other <laughs> side of the ice is that that's why he uses an R. Start with a 45 megapixel sensor, and the end result is a half two megapixel, megapixel <laughs> image. Well, that's for, for but for these guys on Getty Images, you know, it's all newspaper shit. It's all tight. I still hate the style of Getty shooters. I just hate the mentality of just frame a box around it right make them tight a guy a guy just hit a home run so let's get a tight picture of their face it's like it just doesn't i don't i don't like it i like photojournalistic stuff as i've said what do they think about the body because it is a different refined ergonomic oh, body grip all of that i'm curious if they actually noticed the difference oh, or if they were 100%. like oh, not much. Wow. No, 100%. Okay. <laughs> Ergonomics was one of the main topics they talked about is how much really? better it feels in the hand. You wow. know how much shit I've taken when I when I talk about the R3 compared to the A1 compared to the Z9 in terms of feel? Oh, yeah. Like the Z9, I got it right here. The Z9 uh, is a tank. I will say, though, I feel like I can run over the Z9 and nothing will happen. Where an R3, eh, I might snap in half. Let's test this out. No, see, the R3 is so light. It's like half the weight almost of of an a, of a Z9. It, it pretty much is. The R3 is less weight than an R5 with a grip. That's how light an R3 is. And it they just, did a great the rubber, job. I don't know what it is with, with Canon. It just feels good. It's not super huge vertical grip camera like a Z9. It's kind of like a smaller vertical grip shooting camera. It's, it's hard it to explain, good. but it just feels very nice in the hands. And it wasn't until the A93 came out with that grip where I was like, wow, this might be my favorite feeling camera that I've ever used. Yeah. Whereas the R3 was the best for that. Um, the A93 ergonomics have really impressed. And speaking of the A93 with the grip, something like the R5 and the R6 with their grip, what I've never liked about Canon and their uh, vertical grip is that the joystick is just in a weird place. So your thumb almost has to like move backwards to get to the joystick. It's a very weird feeling grip and it's just not in the right place. And I do hope in the future uh, releases of like an R5 II or whatever, that they're going to put out a new grip with a refined joystick because I feel like the A93, perfect placement. We'll, we'll see We'll see what happens. And then back to the A1, you, you really don't think an A1 II is coming soon? Because I think if I was an A1 shooter, I would probably give it another few months or a year it's almost three years old at this point you know it's got to be soon a year a year and a half i mean it's like a year realistically you're right but that's a entire baseball time yeah yeah, i guess you're right it's an entire baseball season plus you know and and preseason and so uh spring training that you know they're happy they're they're happy with what they're getting uh and and the trade-off of all those positives versus the 24 megapixels versus 50 doesn't matter it really doesn't matter because they're getting stuff that they're not getting with the a1 and that's just technology changing i encourage anybody out there in the nikon sphere who who continues to talk shit about me talking about the autofocus um 
if you haven't used an R3 or even an R8 for that matter to see how incredible the lock on tracking and the acquisition of these autofocusing systems are, you don't know what you're missing. So you can't talk shit if you don't know what you're missing. And I continually get vindicated years later for things that I said years years ago that people finally realize because I use the I use all the systems. We definitely have a lot of people text in saying like, you know, I finally picked up a different camera and wow, you were right. You know, the focus is much better. I didn't know what I was missing. Exactly what you just said, basically. But again, I just think a lot of people have never used something else besides their own brand and they don't know what they're missing. And and that's not a knock at Nikon. It's just telling it because still the Z9 is probably and the Z8, the best focusing Nikons ever. Just in comparison to every other one, they're not as as good. Now let's move on to Kate Middleton. I cannot believe what she did. Uh, I mean, how dare her wow. go into Photoshop? Ridic- absolutely ridiculous. And do what she this did. Is not absurd. even use- absurdity. <laughs> I call for take her uh, head. Order, order <laughs> in the parliament. <laughs> order, order. So, for those who have been sleeping under a rock, last week Kate Middleton uh, put out a photo that her husband took the for the the, the soon to be king at some point. I can't say soon to be, but at some point will be king. William took the photo and then she brought it into Photoshop and they and then the Kensington Palace or whatever the Kensington Buckingham Palace released it and the AP and everybody shared it. And then the AP killed it because they said that it was manipulated too much. <gasps> How dare she manipulate it? So, I, I, I mean, you can find what what people went through and they're like she did this and she moved this hair strand and she did there was nothing in the image in my opinion that she did that was done for nefarious reasons exactly wasn't trying to pull one over on people and people are just always looking for issues i have no problem like sure i get it ap shouldn't have manipulated images and she's touching it up but go ahead steven that, that's exactly that, though. The AP, like a photojournalist, should not be manipulating a scene that they're capturing in real time of, of a public event. That should not be manipulated. You know, something that they're documenting for history should not be manipulated. When it's a family photo, I don't think it matters at all. It might just be some poor photoshopping on their end. By the way, I think he took that with uh, 5D Mark III. And I think someone uh, has 5D a Mark, 5D Mark, Mark IV, IV for sale. What? I think it was huh? a 5D Mark IV, actually. Oh, I saw 5D Mark III. Oh, well, either either way, but if you want to find hey, me, Mark Kate, 4, you know, who to hey, contact. Kate, can I help you go mirrorless, please? <laughs> I mean, I am on, surprised Kate. someone like that does not have like the latest, greatest technology or a Leica or something. You know, I love the fact that she's been into photography for the past bunch of years that she's it's photographing great. her children yep. and her family her way. Uh, I think it's bullshit. The backlash that happened. She came out. She apologized. And I think people said when they dug into what photo uh, photoshop she was using she was using an older photoshop that doesn't even have the generative ai so she was just going <laughs> in there peasant. and touching stuff up <laughs> yeah what a peasant <laughs> so I, I don't care i really don't care what she did at all and i think people need to just go away at it because every instagram picture has a filter on it every video on instagram is filtered to make it look different most people touch up their their portraits i don't i'm not that person that's my choice but other people go ahead and manipulate images like steven well steven's a manipulator (laughs) speaking of that i had a lot of people uh reach out to me and say like uh, i posted a picture of hannah it's on my instagram uh of her in front of uh, the castle in magic kingdom And, you know, there's nobody in the background walking. She's sitting down on her own. And people are like, how did you get her to sit like that? And how did you capture it where there's no one in the background? Simple. Do you want me to look at the images now? Photoshop the crap out of it. And yes, Jared, I sent you the original RAWs that I combined to make that image. And I know you're going to absolutely hate it. (laughs) What should I look at first? Not edit, right? The one that doesn't say edit. The two that don't say edit. One is the background. And then one (laughs) is Nicole holding her up. Okay. Uh, did you have a tripod or anything? No. And that's why you'll notice the background does not match up. All right. So uh, I'll describe picture number one. Picture number one has baby little Hannah wearing a Minnie Mouse dress <laughs> with a with a black shirt 
Very cute. There's a very cute outfit with a half years old hat that's off to the side. Very cute. Well, and that's in the final photo. Just describe what's around her. That's not in the final photo. I mean, the boke is really nice. What would you shoot this with? A uh, cheap 35 1.8 Canon RF lens. The one that's like 400 bucks or whatever on the R6. Remember, I, I brought up last week that I only brought the R6 with a 35 1.8. And this is really the only photo that I took that is like a real quote unquote photograph. But I had to do some serious manipulation to make it turn out to be an actual nice looking photo versus a snapshot. All right. What you won't see is that Steven's wife is propping up the baby <laughs> and creating a shadow in the background. And then there's a ton of people walking. Then the second photo is just a, a, a little further back of the Magic Kingdom castle. And the final edit is it, it is crazy. It looks like he used uh, tangerine. What what preset did you use? No, I used a mixture of kind of two, actually. I think I used uh, copper tone mixed with kaleidoscope. Um, but I will say... <laughs> You took out the light poles? I did. I didn't want to go too nuts on the color, but Nicole really wanted to oversaturate it. So it's a little Tell her over she's the top. wrong. She should have. It's over the top. But I ended up muting it a little bit on my end for the final photo to keep uh, in the archives for the Eckerd family. I see some imperfections to the left of the oh, bokeh. There's some imperfections, but if you never saw the original photo, you would probably never know. No, no. If I just looked at this photo, if you look at the middle of it to the left, now you guys don't get to see this Correct. as I describe it, but the grass, the yes. AstroTurf looks exactly the same. So I will say I had to do some serious clone stamping and it did not work in my favor. And I had like barely an hour to work on this photo. So I just quickly was trying to clone stamp the crap out of it. I had to match the blur, which was tough. And I had to take out shadowing and stuff like that. I also took out the light poles. I took out some Wait. people. Why didn't you just cut her out and then select the background and say Magic Kingdom and put it in the Magic Kingdom? You didn't think about that? <laughs> no, I wouldn't because I feel like the AI generative fill stuff never works out that well. The other thing, too, is the background plate, the background photo that I took by itself, basically without Hannah in there. It's just a background image blurred out of Magic Kingdom. And then I basically took out Hannah from the other photo and put her in there by herself and then tried to adjust the shadowing and stuff like that and took out the light poles, blah, blah, blah. But the hard part was that the background I did not take at the same perspective, angle. Nope. the same angle. So I had to adjust that and transform it a little bit. We literally took this photo in like 30 seconds, propped her up, took a bunch of photos. And then I got real lucky with almost nobody in the photo for the background picture. I got to know, why did you choose not to keep the, f the thing in focus a little bit more? Why is the Magic Kingdom so out of focus? Oh, I, I wanted it to be. I wanted her to be the actual focus. And you can clearly tell it's Magic Kingdom. It's the castle. There's something about the blur that's that's off. I didn't manipulate the blur at all. It's a cute photo, though. Yeah. It's really cute. You can check it out on my Instagram, S underscore E-C-K-E-R-T. I love, I love the half hat. I love the half hat. <laughs> well, that's, that's the cute. whole point is we want to take a picture of her in Magic Kingdom for her half birthday, which I didn't know was a thing until we went. And Nicole was like, yeah, it's six months. I'm like, oh, OK, why don't we just wait till she's one year old? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> Stephen, the next time you go back, she's this is going to be a thing. Then when she's every nine, six months, we're going <laughs> when she when she's nine, she's going to have a nine hat on when she's 14. She's going to be like, it'll say, fuck you, dad. Nine plus one half, uh, 10 plus one half. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. I mean, that's a tradition you could you could start. That's pretty cute. Yeah, but. But in the end, like people were like, how did you get that picture? And I'm like, trust me, it's heavily manipulated. And I personally don't care because that's basically what it would look like if there was nobody around and she was sitting by herself uh, on the grass. I didn't manipulate her at all is what I'm saying. Besides, I did use uh, X1, uh, the face enhanced just a little bit because there was it was such hard lighting, hard sun. That was the only issue with the photo is the sun was literally coming directly to her uh, left so that was an issue, um, but it's just that time of day, and that's how it, the light was. I couldn't... I don't know why you didn't bring a scrim. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you get Mickey over? Well, let me just hold this right here there for you Let guys. me take out my bounce real quick and uh, reflect it on... Because her, her face was completely in shadow, but I did yeah. some heavy editing, and yeah. All right, let, let's, let's put that to bed. I don't care what Kate Middleton did. Uh, images have been manipulated for centuries at this point. Are you hearing, though, all like the weird conspiracy theories? That's what people are kind of upset about. Of that, like, you know, Steven, she's has health issues care. and they're trying to fake sure. it. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. Whatever it is, she's a she's she's a person. I'm and I don't you, care. I, I don't buy into this. Oh, but she's a public figure. Just because you're a public figure doesn't mean that 
you lose all of your anonymity. Well, your anonymity, but your 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 ability to stay private, your private with certain life. things. Yes. So I don't care. I'm not reading anything about conspiracy theories. I don't fucking care. Let her be who she's going to be. If they're having trouble in a marriage, I don't fucking care. They're human beings. They're no different or no more special than just he follows a bloodline of kings and queens. And not shit. special at all. <clears throat> no, you're just no. It, no, it's but. They're people. You know this. That there's no. He's no. He's no different than I'm just anybody saying else. There's a different level of privilege for sure. At the end of the day, they have. It, it's a little different than a standard private citizen's life. Sure, it is. But then at the end of the day, they're raising a family and trying to keep them safe. And I'm just fine with her being her. Now let let's quickly get in, in, into this wedding photography thing. You want to play? The, can you roll the audio? Roll that audio. Because the couple have paid us a small fortune to be here. We don't need your phones for this bit. Trust me, we got this. So as you've seen, there's a sign in the entrance there coming in saying, put your phones away. Have your phones out as much as you like when we're done and for the reception. But for this bit, put it away. Now, if I do see you with your phone out, basically what's going to happen is we'll swap for the day. You'll get this camera. I'll take your seat at the reception and I'll chat up your wife for the evening. Cool? Cool? So no phones for this bit. Put it away. Relax. Have fun. Enjoy the moment. And we'll get this gorgeous couple married. How does that sound? Does that sound good? Perfect. Yeah, so that is a wedding videographer talking the way that he just talked to the uh, the attendees of the wedding. I, I get it and I don't get it. Like, is he serious that he's going to put his camera down and give it to someone else to film if they do something? Because I get it's sort of jokey. I took that as sarcasm, but yeah, it did come across not really as sarcasm. No, it came across really different because he has tattoos. Because he has tattoos, so you take it differently. Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah. He's because he has asshole. tattoos. <laughs> so this this brings up that question of the phone free wedding, uh, like unplugged. Is this wedding. over the top? Oh, that's what they call it, unplugged. I think they call it unplugged. Yeah. Is that why you had a rotary phone that we picked up and and could leave a, a voicemail on? Oh, the <laughs> no, I, <laughs> we just did that for fun. <laughs> uh, it was very expensive, by the way. Very expensive just for a phone that literally has a recorder on it that every time it picks up, it's still recording even when you hang up. All it was was literally a Zoom recorder plugged into the back. That's that's all it was. <laughs> I ended up downloading the files before I sent it back just in case anything happened in the mail. But you're supposed to send it to them and then they upload the files for you. But I'm like, screw that. I'm taking the raw files. The Did files. you ever go back and listen to those files? Oh, yeah. No. Do you listen to them now? Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, exactly. What a waste of money. Weddings. Uh, it's Waste just like money. pictures. Do you think someone's looking at their wedding pictures every day? You look yeah, back I'm in look, years to come. You know, you look I'm back at mine right now. I'm looking at my wedding yeah, how photos are your, right now. <laughs> how are yours? I don't know. It's a blank book. <laughs> <laughs> it's a blank space, Stephen. Uh, the future uh, is yeah. unwritten. Your favorite song. Yeah, it's unwritten. There's a future. Is me wearing a purple, purple oh, suit. I hope you wear a purple tux. I don't want to have a wedding, Stephen. I don't give a shit about that stuff. It's all what the what the woman wants, man. No, fuck or, or the man. Wi- excuse me. Or the man. Yes, yeah, Stephen. Yeah, you got to be equal opportunity am, today. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, talking about before you, you get too off topic, what? Stephen, let's talk about this wedding thing. I, I I just I think it's just you to get up and say what he said. I just think it came across dickish how he said it. I could see that. And and, and oh, they paid all this money and they don't want you ruining like for me. When it comes to wedding photography, I'll take the pictures that present themselves. If someone stands up and gets in the way, fuck them. Yeah. Am I a little pissed? Sure. But then it's like, whatever, dude. I got paid to do this. Not my fault. They're the guest at the wedding. Yeah, but uh, it is nice to nip it in the bud if you can. I mean, like I've seen plenty of times Uncle Bob uh, standing in the middle of the aisle and taking, you know, a picture with his iPhone or whatever it may be, or someone holding up a giant iPad and blocking your view. So who brings a giant iPad? You're supposed to bring Apple Vision Pros to shoot photos. (laughs) Anyone that's older for some odd reason brings like a giant iPad. They think like bigger screen, better camera or something like that. Papa John's. Yeah, all right there. Yeah, I got my 12.9 inch Apple iPad. I'm going to be taking pictures right there, Johnny. Right there, Johnny. Oh, you look good. Harder. Harder. Right there. <laughs> Think about how much more timeless a photo will look if you're taking a picture of the bride and groom kissing and everyone's in their chairs and in the pews or whatever it may be and sitting there watching it happen in real time versus phones all up and, you know, flashes going off and stuff like that. Like it's a paparazzi public event. 
Yeah, I mean, so it's it. I just I don't think that it should be the officiant's job. I don't think it should be the photographer or videographer's job. I think the someone in the wedding party should do it. Yeah. I, I don't think we should be made out to be the asshole and say, oh, they requested a unplugged wedding. One, no one's gonna listen to you anyway. They're gonna have their phones with them. Just say, look, stay out of the fucking aisles. Let me take my photos and then move on. I just thought the way he said it was a little over the top. I assume he spoke for them, right? He didn't just say yes. it. Yeah, okay. But it was right before the wedding. It's just so awkward. And it's like they make a big decision. I don't think weddings are a big deal. So, Like you said, though, it, it's the way he said it, the tone he had. I think it came across very aggressive. It's like talking to you in real life. <laughs> you always say, I'm not yelling. I'm like, but it's your tone, Jared. <laughs> Yeah, like me yelling at the bank the other day. I told the guy, I'm not yelling at you. Uh, I'm just really it, it, pissed off. I have a very aggressive well, let just, tone. <laughs> let me just say this. Right now, interest rates are pretty good on your cash. And so I said to the bank, if you don't raise my interest rates on my money sitting there in the bank, I will be taking that money out and putting it somewhere else that's giving me basically double the money. So you have a day to figure this out. What are they at? So, like 4% or something now? You can get 5.5, 5.3% in wow, a mutual fund. Uh, yeah, through one of the mutual funds. I know that uh, one of the credit card companies has an option. It's like 4.35% on your cash. And then the bank's at like 2.99%. And it's like, guys, I'm, I'm out. You, and so the guy called me and he's like, hey, so I spoke to the, the bank. They're like, well, if you want to bring in new money, we can give you an introductory rate and open a new account. I'm like, fuckhead, I already have seven accounts. What if you just simply transferred all that money out of that account and put it into a new account? Isn't it the same thing? Well, that's I, I'm like, I'm not playing games. I yeah. told him, I'm like, look, you're being you're just relaying what your bosses told me, sure. uh, told you. And I'm telling you to go back to your bosses and telling them to you F have off. one option here. <laughs> you either raise my interest rates. I'm not opening a new account just to open a new account because you get credit for opening a new account. You can either match or come close to this rate or all of that cash is going to go sit somewhere else, which is going to happen this week. Or I'm going to go so, buy another building with all that cash. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I'm working on, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. Really? I haven't. Okay. No, I haven't. I haven't looked at any new properties. Nothing yet. surprises me anymore. So, <laughs> I, I just I don't I don't know. But anyway, I, I, let, let's move on Jared from the Cole wedding the real thing. estate mogul of Kensington. <laughs> no, there's my friend. She's the real estate You're mogul catching with up. her 56 pro properties. You're only 44 behind. <laughs> 44 and 56. I only have five, five or six. What do I have? Five. I don't know. <laughs> five. I can't keep counting One, anymore. Two, three. Four or five. I got five. I did look at one. In, I did look at one in Paris. That would be cool to buy one there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. Would that be like a timeshare, or you'd actually buy it? No, I'd actually buy it through yeah. that, and then have someone either rent rent, uh, you know, Airbnb part of it for part of the year, and then go for myself. Um, but anyway, let, let's get into this four by five thing because I'm like the ultimate film photographer now. I I think film is the greatest thing ever. Said no one. I can't wait until you actually fall in love with it. You do become a film shooter. <laughs> I'm not going to become a film shooter, and I will. I will tell you. So I bought a we'll Graflex, see. Grayflex, Graflex, whatever they call it, four by five. It's from the 1940s. Beautiful camera with an Aero Ektar lens. It's a 175 millimeter f 2.5, which is the equivalent of a 50 millimeter focal length. And in terms of depth of field, it's an f 1. So it creates this really interesting look. It's also a radioactive lens. Radioactive because they put radioactive coatings like uranium uh, iridium or whatever the hell they put on the coatings back in the day because this was a aerial reconnaissance camera lens so it wasn't meant for a camera like this or portraits. but they you you can modify the camera in order to fit this into the uh, the the graflex so this is a four by five i had to load film for the first time in 24 years did you do it in outside a four by five in the camera. broad daylight Yes, I opened the box of film. No, I went upstairs perfect, into the perfect. bathroom upstairs. <laughs> There's no light whatsoever in that bathroom. Not even the GFI, whatever those. Um, really? There's no they, red. Maybe that means they're green not light. working. <laughs> no, there is none. I looked recently. I'm like, wait a second. This is a bathroom and they didn't put in a light. And my, I guess my inspector didn't point that out. Huh. Uh, it doesn't. When I say, a, you know, one of those that trip with a uh, if it gets wet or GFCI, whatever. Yeah, yeah. 
GFI or whatever it's called. I'm not an electrician. I don't know this stuff. But anyway, I, I get everything ready. I turn the lights off. I leave my phone outside of the room because I'm like, well, if I get a call, it might light up in my pocket, which isn't good. And right as I start to open the box, I realize I have my watch on my Apple Ultra watch. And ooh, I'm like, me. ooh, I better not have this watch on because if I get a phone call, it's going to be bright in here. So I take that off and put that out. And so I loaded the, the film properly top right corner is where the notches are slide it in both sides did four Man. four sheets of film and that was that i do not miss going into the like the dark bag to have to change rolls of paper when i worked in the photo lab that was such a pain in the ass but i did get really good at it i will say it was literally yeah. like changing paper blind <laughs> Yeah. Well, the good news is the the four by five holders that I were using were brand new. They've never used. So that makes it much easier because the flap isn't broken. There's no other issues. Um, so I took the uh, Suray tripod with a really nice Suray ball head, a nice heavy one, out to the Philadelphia Museum of Art, aka where Rocky ran up the stairs. And I went with my buddy Matt Lydon. He met me over there and he helped me with the setup. Uh, I had to call Reading, uh, Reading camera or sorry, it's not Reading. It's retro camera in Reading, the, where I got it because I couldn't figure out how to open the camera. I couldn't. Amateur we, we, hour. We both couldn't figure out how to open the latch in the front. I'm like, I what know there noob. should be a button. Should be a button somewhere. He's <laughs> like, uh, he's like, yeah. Is there a button on the left hand side? I was like, and it was this really small, like pimpleish thing, just sticking out. You press that, it flaps the front open. You you unlock, you pull out the bellows, and then you have to attach the lens separate because the lens is so large that it doesn't fit in the camera when you close it. Mm. So. The camera shutter speed maxes out at one five hundredth of a second. This isn't a leaf oh, wow. shutter. This is an actual shutter in the back of the camera. That's four by five. It's huge. The shutter. Really? So you can time. Wow. Yeah, you can put it on bulb. You can put it on T, which is for time. Uh, you could turn it to one twenty fifth uh, of a second. You could turn it to like one sixty. So it's one thirty, one sixty, one one twenty fifth. And like, I don't know if there's 250th and there's 500 and you're like turning this dial and it gets tighter the more you turn it. Huh. So you get that and you set the aperture on the lens. Um, and then there's a shutter that you can release. I didn't bring the plunger. I forgot that there's oh, a plunger. That's the cool part. I know. <laughs> I didn't have the plunger. So there's that. But you also have to focus on the back on the ground glass. So I had a loop. I put my hoodie over my head and the focus was real easy to get even at the f 2.5. Um, so you were able to shoot that with a max shutter of 1 500th in broad daylight with the lens wide open too? No, I wasn't. Oh, so okay. What, but in this, so right in front of the art museum at uh, 10 20 a.m., because that's what the metadata tells me. You know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> got him. <laughs> I had to go to F7. Well, so, okay, I, bought, I got a light meter on my phone. Um, someone told me that they actually work really well, and this is someone who shoots 8x10s and a larger, large format. And the guy's like, I really wanted to, I really didn't want this to work. And it did like how good the light meter in the phone is. The only thing I wish it had was a spot meter where I could just touch the subject, not physically, and then have it be like right here is X, not looking at the background. So what I did is I pointed it. Well, what I did is I pointed it down at the ground and I got the exposure that I wanted, but I had to go to, it said F seven one, but the lens only has five, six and F eight. I mean, it's time to grab a middle gray card and start walking around with that thing, you know? Yeah. Well, maybe. So then I and I just turned it to like where I thought seven one would be, and it was one five hundredth seven one one hundred speed film one hundred ASA. Um, then we went around the back uh, to find a more shadow area behind the art museum, and then I was able to get the reading was one six fortieth of a second at two point five at a hundred ISO. Mm. So. I went with it at one five hundredth, which I knew would which would overexpose slightly, but. I wanted to see what would happen at f2.5. I mean, what did it look like in the EVF or the live view well, on the back the of the EVF screen? Look, the, the live view looked amazing. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> what I will tell you, though, is when you look through the back and you set the, uh, you go under the dark cloth, which was my hoodie, and you look at, you look at the world at 2.5 on the back of the camera, it gave me a whole different idea, right? It made me think like, do I even need to take pictures or do we just film the back of this ground glass 
and have the subject just stand there as say the world goes by or they're like a moving model at f 2.5 and it just and you put nice music to it oh and everything's upside down i was just gonna say way. isn't he upside down yeah he is upside down my subject is upside down so you have to look at everything upside what i did is i took a picture of the screen that's the one i posted but the reason i just remembered this the reason i took a picture of the screen is so i could flip it over to see if my composition looked good oh that's yeah. funny i wanted to rev- i wanted to do it because it's harder to to visualize your brain. And, yeah 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 for sure so my composition looked pretty good but what was cool is like i'm like all right i need to go through this process uh i set my shutter speed i set my aperture i checked my focus then you take out your your four by five negative carrier which has one sheet on the front and one sheet on the back whichever way so you only have two shots they both have a dark slide so you then have to be like okay i need the one facing the lens to be the one that I pull out. So you got to put that into the camera, make sure it seeds properly. Then you pull the dark slide out. You take your photo, you put the dark slide back in, but you reverse it, the dark slide, because one side has black and one side is like gray. And so what that means is that visually you notice that if it's black, that means it's exposed. That's how I said it. And if it's white on the other side, that means it's not exposed yet. I mean, it really, really does slow you down. It complicates things. Yeah, you got to think. I mean, it, it complicates things, but at the same time, it, it's also uh, a minimalist way of shooting photos in the modern era. You know, I I liked it. I liked the. I'm not gonna say the slowing down. I just like that it unlocked things in my brain that I haven't used in 20 some years. I mean, we use it every day in digital, but I had but to. You're, you're re- remembering seeing the changes in digital, where with film you have to actually know your exposure triangle and have a light meter and set it all properly. Oh, and by the way, all the negatives were processed and they were all blank. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> by the I'm way, I crushed kidding. it. Every photo came out overexposed and perfect. Well, that's the thing. I was super excited about what I did, but I'm like, wait, what if they didn't turn out? What if the shutter doesn't work properly? What if the timing is off? Sure. But my buddy Dan developed them in his basement last night and he's like, the exposures look pretty good. They're pretty close. So he's going to scan them and send them over. But what I'm going to do is end up taking photos of the negative so that you still have the entire negative because I don't want just the image because then what's the point? I want the negative. But really, it made me think, will it be more unique in the modern era to film the back of the ground glass underneath the dark cloth, maybe of sports, of action? You're seeing the world at 2.5 oh, it, through this vision. It, it thousand percent separates you from every other Joe Schmo taking pictures at an event. I mean... It's something totally different. Um, obviously, it's you're not really capturing sports, but you're probably capturing the atmosphere of a sporting event if you take it to something like a Phillies game or an MLB event. My first take on it was the lens itself has such a unique swirly bokeh to it. It, it, it reminds me of that old Russian gold lens. I can't recall it's the name of it. The radioactivity, Stephen. Is that what it is? The Imagine no, Dragons ness of it. I don't. I don't know. Radioactive. I don't know what it really is, but I'm going to get the pictures back. Uh, Really, I went out. This was all testing. I just wanted to see practice. Is it hard to focus? The answer was, well, actually, no. It was really easy to get that focus. Now, I didn't have my subject super close because I still wanted to show some of the background, but I'll I'll play around. I'm going to take it to the Phillies game, put it out on the field, get some portraits of some of the players. But also, I think I'm going to take pictures of the back of the screen also, so I have those. And I think uh, more Phillies players will be inclined to get their photo taken, too, if they if you show up with something from the 40s and it's not just, hey, yep. I have a R3 and the latest, greatest tech. It's something more unique because I'm sure they're used to getting their photograph taken every day at practice or on the field or whatever it may be. Yep. I am curious, are you going to use like the tin type preset when you actually no, scan not it? Tin type. <laughs> no, I want re- I want I we want do the have color. presets for that. <laughs> well, I'm going to go and get color film. I think I may shoot both. I may shoot color and black and white uh, because I know that if you convert the color, it just doesn't represent the same sure. as a true black and white. It just doesn't. It's different with digital, of course. Um, and I know somebody be like, well, the Leica, you know, you can whatever. No, it's it's very similar. But with with the film, I'm going to try a few different things and we'll see if I like it. And my plan is. 
take a picture of the entire negative and then print that with the entire negative. I so like you that. see the negative chop, the cut and everything. The way that I'll take the picture is we'll get an LED light. I don't know if I'll use that really nice $3,000 one, which is nice clean light, but you just need like a white surface with the light behind it, take the picture of the negative, and then I'm going to have to reverse it and Missy Elliott it when I get it into the computer. I was waiting for it. <laughs> so I might go take it out some point again to shoot and it's cool because my brain had to use things that hadn't used in a while news we Very should cool. get the news we should get the news yeah we're we're gonna skip the leica story because leica came out with the sl3 no one really 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 cares that's not that big of a deal but let's talk about the quote-unquote tiktok ban this is kind of photo news and uh, it's industry news because people are big on tiktok and they love tiktok and once again the either government or new the government used the wrong terms once again this isn't a tiktok ban they didn't vote to ban tiktok what they voted to do was force bite dance the parent company of of tiktok to sell and the reason they're saying and, and they have 165 days or what five months or whatever it is six months to find a buyer I think it's weird that you could try to force a company to sell something, but the reasoning behind it is 100% sound. And it's, it's, it's that, that, that the Chinese government has access to just walk over to ByteDance to say, we need to see X. We need all of the user data from all these U.S. Uh, citizens. They try to say that they didn't do that, but it did come out that in the past, of course, they went after a journalist, you know, <laughs> well, they went after a journalist. They found her location. Sure. They hunted her down. They knew all of this because of using the app. But it's, it's not just that they can monitor it because every social media per, uh, app out there, <coughs> excuse me, we give permission to do this. The phone is listening right now. That's how ads show up that you talk about. The cameras that aren't on are probably still recording something that maybe isn't being saved, but they're listening. The audio is always listening. People have done the tests where they show that Google ads will change based off of what you're talking about. A thousand percent. And it is what it is. I've seen it many times. You've given the permission to do this. But what TikTok is doing, and that is a problem, is that the Chinese government can communist government can say we want to push out false narratives or elevate controversial things to get people to debate it or hate it right they're pushing things up you've got israel you've got palestine it's been found that they're elevating like 52 to 1 a certain side of something and not the other because the the way they were able to to figure this out is it's different on instagram it's different on facebook where it's other it's it's more even what's being pushed but what happens is even this guy um Jeff, he's a congressman. Uh, I follow him on online. He was a he was a, a an army veteran, and he puts out these really awesome explainer videos about how government works. And he taught, and I posted this on Instagram yesterday. But he's like, the reason that this ban was being called for, and ban is a bad word. We have a perfect example of what China did. They started to push misinformation about the ban to exactly. people exactly on on tiktok they were trying to say that the government is trying to do this the government trying and it was false so they were doing the thing that the government was saying that they are doing and they're doing it to try and get the influencers and get people up in arms to hate their government to think that their government's taking away their freedoms where people sit here and talk about freedom of speech first off your first amendment rights don't exist on social media it's not a government entity it's it's a private company yep. they have the right and the and they can do whatever they want in terms of speech they can take you down they can ban you it, it doesn't it, you don't have a constitutional right to post whatever you want on facebook facebook is a private company that can do whatever well they're publicly traded but they can do whatever they want to do so anyway it's not being banned they just want them to be sold so that the Chinese government doesn't have their finger on the scale of what they elevate and what they hunt, what hide, like the Tiananmen Square stuff. They hide anything that is negative against China. Exactly. They don't put they don't elevate. And just the irony that they ban multiple apps in their country, like Facebook, like Google, whatever it may be, yet they're getting mad at the U.S. government for potentially putting a ban on their app just makes no sense. It's it's hypocrisy at its best. It, it's well, they're a communist. I don't know how you say it other than they're a communist country. 
the problem is that you uh, the, Ch- the Chinese government has access to the files, the data. They can push the envelope of what they want to elevate and what they don't want to elevate. So that means they can affect elections. Because if you start brainwashing the young people who haven't voted yet and they're about to vote, but they see misinformation that continues to spread and be elevated just like happened on Facebook, it's even worse on TikTok. I personally deleted TikTok again. I don't want to sit there and I don't want to scroll through and and see all this stuff because there is a lot of misinformation that's pushed to the top of the pile. All right, let's jump to the Nikon firmware 5.0. I said this on Photo News Fix that we would, because it came out after I recorded Photo News Fix, that we would go into more detail about this 5.0 software. And before I give my opinion on it, let Let's turn it over to Steven to run down what the 5.0 update is. The major 5.0 firmware update, the fourth major update for the Z9. So the new update includes timed auto capture, a new feature uh, that will tell it only to capture at a certain time. Like, you know, if you're putting a camera up in the rafters or something like that, it'll help with battery life. Even though, in my opinion, if you're putting it up in the rafters, you're probably plugging it in at that point. But it is nice to say, hey, don't start the auto capture until the actual game begins or the event begins or whatever it may be. Uh, auto capture is also available now in DX mode. It also now supports airplane detection. Airplane detection has always been a thing in the Z9, but now it is supported in the auto capture uh, feature. C15 has been added. A lower speed option added to the high speed capture plus before it was only c30 c60 and c120 now you have 15 frames per second they added the rich tone portrait control i believe the z8 had that it's you know more refinement of a picture control skin smoothing that was taken from the z8 i I just don't find many people using the rich tone portrait control or skin smoothing in a very high-end professional flagship camera like this but to each their own They also have prefer focus point priority in image review. So instead of zooming in on a focus point when you're reviewing images, uh, it will go right to the face. But in my opinion, it's kind of redundant because the focus point would be on the face anyway. That's what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, Some other minor additions, like you can change the thickness of the focus box. I do think that's uh, a nice little update. You can now customize the focus mode button. Uh, There's loop playback options now and other playback options for a burst of images. That's kind of interesting. So if you shot a burst of uh, continuous images, it will play it back in a loop mode. There's also like four presets added in the flicker reduction mode. Uh, I mean, it's good that Z9 users finally have everything the Z8 had. I believe this update finally brought all of those additional features. It should have more options than the Z8 being the flagship and all, or at least what the Z8 has. Uh, So I do commend Nikon for doing that. But calling this a major firmware update, ah, I don't know about that. Don't say it, Steven. You're going to get hatred. (laughs) This is the biggest update ever. What are you talking about? I even sent you some of the comments uh, from the Facebook post from Nikon Rumors, and they posted like major firmware update released. And some of the comments were not major. (laughs) Uh, Am I the only one that thinks this is not a major firmware update? Is this firmware update the only announcement we're getting? Bad. Worst one yet. This shows it's the end of any major improvements and features for the camera. Uh, and it just goes on and on and on about like Nikon users being pissed that this is not really a major update. Well, it's misleading when they say that it's better for sports shooters because the only thing that changed for sports shooters is that timed auto capture. I don't think there was really any true autofocus adjustments, or at least they didn't really announce anything in this firmware update. Uh, so, yeah, to me, it's not a major firmware update like 2.0 or 3.0, but 2.0 also was pretty much what the camera should have been from day one. 3.0 was a pretty major firmware update. And then 4 and 5 are kind of like, meh. But again, I do think it's great that Nikon is constantly giving firmware updates to this camera, unlike someone like Sony and Canon, who rarely give new features in a firmware update. Oh, I got an ant, but I got the reason for that. Because they're already good. They don't need to update shit that is already there. Well, like, it's it's nice. Like the R5 had that new high resolution pixel shift mode added. The R3 had the 195 frames per second continuous burst shooting mode added. Like those kind of additional features. That's really cool. I think the auto capture in the Z9, that's such an awesome feature. Is. I wish other cameras had. That is a cool feature. Yeah. I just feel that this 5.0 is, is bullshit. The fact that they call it a major update. It shouldn't be 5.0. They should be on like 3.2. At this I point. agree. And hey, we would At say this most. about any other brand too, whether it's Canon or Sony, when they ever announce like a big major 2.0 or 3.0 firmware, we always say like it should have been like a 2.2 unless it's major, major features like Nikon did in the 2.0 and 3.0. It should really just be like 3.2, 3.3, whatever. 
So I made a note that the Canon R3 is on 1.4.0 and the Sony A1 is at 1.32. And I know people get upset like, oh, Sony isn't supporting. They're not doing firmware updates. There's only so much you can do sometimes based off of the hardwares and the cameras. I do agree. But I will say what's annoying is that you have a flagship $6,500 body and these newer lower end cameras are getting these additional features that something like the A1 should have, like focus breathing compensation, blah, 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 stuff like that, where at least Nikon, anything they gave the Z8, they're giving the Z9 as well, because I'd be pissed if I bought a Z9 and the Z8 came out with more features and never got updated to the Z9. Well, being that it's the same exact camera, like exactly. that's the, the difference is that's the same camera. Same hardware, same everything. Why is my Z9 missing features that a less expensive camera has? The, the, the moral of the story is that it uh, it's not a major update. It doesn't change anything. Again, we've said it time and time, time and time again with Nikon is that People get all excited, like, oh, the autofocus is going to be even better. Well, it shouldn't take five updates to make the autofocus uh, still be shittier than an R3 or an A1 or an R8 for that matter. And I do think it's great that they're at least refining the autofocus and, and updating it each time. But I agree that it's not going to be like, whoa, this autofocus has completely changed after this firmware update. No camera will do that. It's still limited by the initial hardware. I'm just I'm just going to say I've been using the Z9 quite a bit lately because I'm testing out this Lawa 10 millimeter 2.8 lens. I've been testing out the Viltrox lenses. Is that and the I first found, autofocus Lawa lens, by the way? The 10 millimeter? I'm not sure. Hmm. I'm, I'm not sure. It's fairly I, inexpensive, right? It's like six, seven hundred bucks. No, it's eight hundred bucks. It's not fairly inexpensive. Well, it's a, that's expensive compared to like Canon's 10 to 20. That's twenty three hundred dollars. Yeah, I, I, I get it. Um. I, I've been shooting this lens and remember when I told you that it wasn't focusing at a distance, yeah. it would just blink the focus. Well, they didn't send me an updated firmware, uh, lens. Oh. I checked with them yesterday. They're like, Oh, you might have one of the early ones. Can you put this firmware on it? I'm like, guys, don't you think you would have maybe thought about doing that before you send it out for a review? I never think about updating firmware in a lens, you know, I like I know uh, Tamron has the USB-C port on their lenses to quickly update firmware. I, how often are you putting out firmware updates? I get like to support a new camera or a body or something like that. I do understand that. But why would you send me a review unit with not updated firmware? Well, so now I like question some of my my images because, you know, it wasn't focusing at, at the distance. Well, now you can retest it with firmware 5.0. Yeah, great. <laughs> great. Now I got to go do more work for a, a lens like this. But I think you came back that day and you shot it with what 4.1, whatever the latest firmware update is for the Z9 before the 5.0 release. And then we well, got I an email about that. from Nikon saying 5.0. And we're like, Ugh. every time we test something new, they put out a new firmware update after. Well, but see, then the, then the Nikon people are like, oh, did you have the latest firmware? I know. That's it why it doesn't I'm, matter. That's why I'm bringing it up. Because it doesn't they, matter. they bitch and complain about it. And I'm not talking about just Nikon. It's any brand. So with with this Z9 I've been shooting lately, it just a, it's still a struggle to pick the right focusing points. And I'm not the only one who has that struggle with a Z9 because I, I, I talk to a lot of sports shooters that do use it. A guy that uses it to shoot basketball, baseball, uh, field hockey, lacrosse, tennis, everything. And he has to set the camera differently for every situation and sometimes multiple different settings in the same situation. Oh, well, wow. he's like, sometimes the 3d tracking works better. And then other times it just doesn't work. Then he switches to the, you know, smaller box around the face and that works great, but sometimes it doesn't. And then he's maybe last resort is going back to dynamic area AF. And so it's just all over the place and it's not to hate on it. It's just to tell you the facts. <laughs> Have you the facts? Uh, I know it's just funny. Have you ever let him use your R3 or like an A93 or A1? Has he ever used anything besides a Z9? I let him use the R3 for a minute, but it, because the buttons are different and I have it, what I want to really do is set up a camera for him when he's not on an important shoot exactly. and sit there next to him with an R3 with a 100 to 300 or a 400 to 8 and just be like, all right, let's set up a camera for you because I can save my settings and come back to them later. Sure. Let's tell me exactly what you want. That is the difficult part these days that the, the cameras are so highly customizable. Even if you gave someone else like your Z9 that and they're they also have a Z9, the buttons might be all customized differently and everything. And it's it's almost hard to take someone else's camera and just take a picture these days because there's so many different features and customization that you can do to a camera. So the, the other the other news story worthy of talking about is we Nikon bought red, but that's kind of beat 
to a dead horse at this point. Yeah. I talked about it on Photo News Fix, and, and you've been reading about it for quite a while. Uh, some of the things that people might have pointed out in the comments as a reason why Sony or Canon didn't swoop in to purchase Red de- deals more with, well, they both have their cinema line already. Exactly. And it might not have been a major benefit. And the patents that are there, they're licensed already out to Apple and all these other companies. So maybe this was a better option for Nikon to get into the cinema world that they weren't in fully. Well, they're not in at all. And and be able to make some money off of those patents pot- potentially some of the licenses. I do think it's huge for Nikon because like you said, they didn't have a separate line where Sony has the FX series of cameras. Canon has their entire cinema line. Uh, Nikon now will have the red line. Who knows what they're going to call it, if they're going to incorporate it into newer Nikon cameras. I do think if that tech does get incorporated into newer cameras or future cameras, it's going to be quite some time unless this deal has been in the background for a while. But I highly doubt that's the case here. Uh, I, I also saw a lot of people saying, You know, they're going to take the sensors with the global shutters and and put them in the Nikon cameras. And I just I really don't think that's going to be the case. These sensors are in a thirty thousand dollar red brain. Do you really think they're going to take a sensor of that quality and expense and put it into a two thousand dollar body or even a flagship? Red's cheapest camera is a six thousand dollar Komodo with an APS-C sensor, not even full frame. I mean, you look at their full frame options like the uh, Helium Monstro, the Raptor, the new Raptor. XL and VV, you're talking $30,000 cameras. Yeah, well, we'll we'll see what happens. Maybe there's something in the sensor tech that they can shrink down and mass produce, and sure. then that brings the cost down. Like, if that happens, awesome. I think this is great. Oh, it's I don't huge. have any problem with it whatsoever. I love the idea that they're fighting and coming up with different things. It pushes the industry, just like Sony pushed the industry. I think this is uh, one of the best things that Nikon has done in a very long time. It's huge for them, and uh, I commend them for that. I am curious for existing red users if they're upset or happy about this announcement uh, just because you know you might be heavily invested in a red camera with a Canon RF mount and have a shit ton of RF glass what happens if they remove that mount and just strictly go with a Nikon Z mount or something like that moving forward I don't think they're going to do that are they going to change the research and development are they going to move it over to Japan. What are they going to do with all of it? Uh, Japan, which is more buttoned up versus a California company, which is more, you would say like surfer bros, not saying they're surfer bros, but it's a different mentality dealing with Japan than it is dealing with someone in, in, in California. Oh yeah. And I'm curious, this was such a uh, well-kept secret that we didn't even get any emails from Nikon USA saying like, hey, major for, major uh, acquisition, buying red, blah, blah, blah. We got nothing. I wonder if they well, even our knew. PR guy, well, no, our PR guy was on a red eye and he didn't know until he landed that this happened. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Pretty crazy, right? Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah. They did a good job keeping that secret. So that's it. I mean, that's a pretty long, that's a, that's a lot of news this week. Oh, yeah. We had a lot of stuff to catch up on. Enjoy the podcast wherever you enjoy it. If it's on YouTube, great. If it's uh, on fronosphoto.com slash podcast, great. Anywhere you listen to it, awesome. Give us some feedback. You call us 313-710-9729. You can also leave us comments over there on the YouTubes as well that we might go and check out every once in a while. If not, we don't but that's <laughs> yeah. how comments work you don't go back after like a week to look at the comments anymore after like on old day. videos <laughs> it's not like it used to be back in the day where i would just monitor and comment and 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 just reply to people it's just well, a it's, lot of it's also hard work. when you have three thousand videos and there's comments constantly coming in on every single video that's correct anyway steven i'm gonna get outside and and go maybe test a new lens and or go do something else well, I'll definitely be having the Jared today at lunch. And, that, and yes. that's it. Cool. That's it. Thank you guys very much for listening. Jared Poland, Photo.com. See ya. Bye.